This is America First on the Salem Radio Network, and it's Friday, which means, of course, it is JJ time. He goes by JJ Carafano on Twitter, preventing World War III, one tweet at a time. He's vice president of the Heritage Foundation. He is the man for all matters, national security and foreign policy. Jim, welcome back to America First. It is great to be with you. So check this out, man. I know, I know the folks can't see it. Oh, the Walmart thing. The Did guns. you hear about that? Yeah. So, so Wal- I f- thank you for reminding me. Walmart has now removed all guns and ammunition from visible displays in their stores. And, it, and this thing says they just returned the guns and ammos to store floors one day after removing them. So they put them back because people must want to buy guns. Ha, have, you, have you ever... Have we have a, ever had an election in American history where we have to hide the guns from the gun stores? Yeah, look, I, so I have a theory. Look, um, there is going to be post-election violence. And let me tell you why. And I don't know who's going to win the election. If Trump wins, they're going to riot. Yeah. If Biden wins, they're going to riot because, well, we don't believe Trump's going to leave office, so we're going to riot and make him leave office. And if it's contested, they're going to riot. So they're going to riot. <laughs> well, not, uh, only, not only that, I'm so glad you mentioned this topic because I have in front of me the, the report from something called the Transition Integrity Project, which is a Democrat initiative. And it's um, very strangely titled because it's called Preventing a Disrupted Presidential Election and Transition. Uh, Jim, I don't see any problem in terms of a disrupted transition from the right. No, look, this is the this is people who are obsessed with political violence as a tool of change. These many of these leaders in Antifa and BLM are students of weather underground the weather underground who became college professors and taught these kids and and it ties back to the maoist philosophy and the, the weathermen they would go to cuba to, and talk with castro and and talk with mao they believe in violence as an instrument to drive political change here's here's my analysis though because I've, I've been looking at a lot of the poll numbers so popular demonstrations were very high in march which is kind of understandable people get animated by issues they care about uh, racial equality, uh, police or whatever. It peaks in June and then it really starts to go down. And it starts to go down, why? Because the increasingly the number of demonstrations are becoming riots and involving looting. And th- the more violence there is associated with the movement, actually the less popular it comes. And it's definitely bottomed out now. They're not, the demonstrations are not You mean popular, popular in terms of the political damage it does for a certain party. You know, popular in terms of we support people going to yes. the streets. That right. is plummeted. And right. you can actually tell that because you look at mainstream progressive politicians, they no longer go out and talk about you know defund the police and other things. Yes, they, they, interesting. They, they don't talk about it yeah, yeah, yeah. And even the websites, the, you go to the BLM website, they take all the really radical stuff off. Right. So it's becoming increasingly less popular. And the latest poll I saw that said Americans are very fearful of violence after the election. They don't like that. They, it doesn't matter if they're Republican or Democrat. They don't like the idea of political violence, of driving, using violence to drive political change. And so there will be violence after the election. It'll actually make people like BLM and Antifa less popular. And it, it is very important they do that because you know this because you are an expert in this. When you normalize, but. excuse ignore and enable political violence it only escalates right. and gets more desperate and that is the road that leads to an oklahoma city bombing a 9-11 beheading somebody in france there it, it it becomes the unchained animal and americans are smart in that they don't want that in this country two questions uh first a, a kind of tactical one and then and then a, a kind of big picture historic one do you think that, I think it's palpable, do you think that fear of post-election violence could influence how somebody, how somebody votes? I don't know. I mean, Americans are sharply divided on, on these two parties. Uh, I don't know if, if, this, if this moves the needle or not. Okay. But that's one of the things I think people will look at in the post-election thing is, is what did the needle move in the last? Because we're not seeing it in the polls, but that doesn't mean people aren't moving on this issue. The second one is, and I say this as an immigrant, a legal immigrant to this country who is a naturalized American citizen, why does the most powerful nation in the world, Jim, have a 10-bloody-week transition? 
In the UK, you win the election and the Prime Minister is packing his cardboard boxes and he leaves at the end of the week. Like, this this is a real problem because we've got an excuse for the losing party to say, go to the streets, right? Well, I, you know, I can answer that because we're not a parliamentary democracy mm-hmm. and our systems actually are very, very different. Very different. So in a parliamentary system, um, there is a shadow minister yes. for everything. And everybody knows that that minister is going to become the the defense secretary or the foreign secretary or whatever they follow what that ministry does they uh they know all the issues and when they go in they take like two politicals in with them and 99 right. percent of the people are the same people right so but what would prevent the democrats having a shadow cabinet um nothing the reason why you don't have shadow cabinets is as soon as you appoint somebody a shadow cabinet minister then you've given them power they take the news away from you and then other people that might support you, they don't want to support you because they want to be the, the cabinet guy. So we don't do that. So it actually, and you, you know, we were on the transition team. We saw this live in action. <laughs> yeah. You actually need a couple of weeks to figure out who your cabinet secretaries are going to be, get them ready to get the thousands for of resumes, start to go through all this, put a political team together. It does take some time. So I actually think it's, it's, you know, I, I of course, it, we didn't have this back in the day when they first set up the system, but I think that. That, that that buffer is actually good. And because our transitions are usually seamless, it doesn't matter that a, pre- a president who's going to leave office in six weeks is still the president because he just does or she just they just do the job.